Apparently, Latafa has a niche brand. Let's talk about it. Here's some codes to save you some cash on your next Middle Eastern niche or designer fragrances. What's going on, guys? My name is Neeb. Welcome back to Aromatics. So apparently, Latafa has a niche brand, and it's called Niche Imarati, or it's a brand, rather, that's uh, done by Latafa. It's called Niche Imarati. Latafa is known for years to make mostly inspired buys and maybe some original creations. Before the year 2023, a lot of their fragrances weren't really uh, pinpointed or dupes and clones. I mean, this was like taboo. Last year, however, it became like one of the biggest things. I love covering Middle Eastern fragrances, and I started covering them by the buttload. A lot of fragrances, I mean, even niche fragrances and designer fragrances are actually in inspired by as well. It only makes sense, right? You take an inspiration or uh, some kind of DNA that you enjoy or love and you put kind of your own twist to it. I'm personally all for twists. I'm all for twists. And even the inspired buys or like, uh, you know, dupes per se, I'm okay with until they go for the bottle designs and things like that. Then it's just like, okay, this is a little bit, this is like a little bit too much there, buddy. But these are not that. I'm hoping that they're twists, regardless of the fact they're niche and quality. It's very evident with the two that I have already opened. It's extremely evident. So we have the quality which should be niche quality per se. The oils, you know, you're gonna get the top grade of oils that you can get with Latafa fragrances and hoping some unique DNAs. Two of them I've gotten my nose on. One of them I can say is, is distinctively an inspired by of something. One of them smells like a twist I haven't really pinpointed yet, but this is just basically first impression. Latafa is known to make a lot of inspired buys and twists and things of that nature. And it's really fun getting into their fragrances because they're extremely affordable. We're gonna jump into the two that I've already opened and it's gonna be Khalid and Khanjar. Khanjar is basically a dagger and that's exactly what it means in Arabic. And that's what the bottle looks like. Pretty sick looking bottles. This one right here is called Khalid. And Khalid is just a name, not DJ, but DJ Khalid right here in this bottle. And then we have a couple more. This one's called Tolin or Tulin. It looks relatively similar to Khalid, but in a feminine version. And then we've got Antique by Latafa as well. And we've also got this one right here, and it's called Mughal or Mughal Fort. First one I want to talk about is called Khanjar. Big heavy box for Khanjar. Very nice laminate finish to the cardboard. When you open the box on the inside, there's another box. And <laughs> inside says Nishi Marathi Perfume. You have that Latafa logo or the sticker for the authenticity seal. And the box on the inside says Khanjar Nishi Marathi Marathi perfumes by Latafa. You open the top of the box and you've got this dagger and you got a dagger that's held into place by a couple of plastic posts that are in by a couple of plastic beams. To take this fragrance out, you kind of have to just edge it or rig it. There you go. And now it's out. So this is what Hanjara looks like. And really, you kind of have to keep this if you want to present it or find another way to have it, you know, presented on your shelf. For me personally, I think I'm going to keep this just so that it has a, a clean way of presentation. The cap on this thing is on there pretty tight. There's a couple of studs or stones on the cap along with the collar. And on the bottle itself, it says Hanjara. It has this gunmetal look, extremely heavy stuff. The size of this fragrance is a 2.87. So 85 ml and an Eau de Parfum concentration. So you take the cap off, it's pretty heavy, looks a lot like a couple of the other fragrances that I've covered here. Atomizer check, decent. Here we go. And this is one of the best inspired buys of Ganymede. So if you enjoy mineral, you know, slightly fresh take on suede, you're going to enjoy this one as well. Not many citruses or anything like that. It's just kind of ozonic suede with some mineral nuances, a bit salty. So that's essentially what it is. It's like this easier to wear leather type of fragrance. Suede is essentially what you're going to get. Yeah, Latafa has a Massa version and off the top, this one smells like it's a little bit better. But Massa and Khanjar, I'd put neck and neck together. So that's what I think about this one. One. Really not bad if you enjoy Ganymede. I'm personally not crazy about Ganymede, but the presentation on this thing and the box and everything, it's really crazy. The quality of this stuff, though, does not smell like a cheapie whatsoever. So in that sense, I will agree and say that, sure, it's got niche quality to it. The next one we're going to talk about is called Khalid by Latafa. Open up the box and the same exact thing. Another grand presentation, except, except this one, you're going to open it up from the front. And on the inside, you have the fragrance, which rests in it like so. Khalid is also in this super heavy, metal bottle and it's got all these like studs and stones in them. I haven't really pinpointed exactly what this one is. This one's an 80 ml concentration, Nisha Marathi perfumes. The cap of this thing is so freaking heavy. It looks like a knight in armor and the little flare or the opening of his skirt. Yeah, it's, it's actually protruding from the bottle itself as well. So notes for Khaled include a top of saffron, labdanum and leather. Heart is going to be birch, cade, patchouli and the base of benzoin, agarwood, tolu balsam, and leather. So this actually smells pretty unique in comparison to a lot of the other fragrances or inspired buys that I've gotten my nose on. So atomizer check, here we go. And let's check it out. 
yeah. This actually smells extremely high quality and it reminds me of, or it's got this funk that reminds me of a lot of Bodicea fragrances. Yeah, it actually smells that high quality. Khaled. It really smells that high quality. The one fragrance that it reminds me of is Imperial by Bodicea the Victorious. Now it's been quite some time since I've gotten my nose on it, but the way that they use their saffron and oud combination, it really smells a lot like Bodicea the Victorious fragrances. And if I had to pinpoint it, it's gonna be Imperial. So this is a first impression. And what I'm gonna do from here is either A, buy a decant, buy the bottle, or go to Neiman Marcus and just sniff it in person, which is probably the best idea to do. So just go and sniff it in person, if you have it in person. This smells like Bodicea the Victorious, man. Quality-wise, it genuinely does. That Those fragrances range from like $400 to $500, and that's kind of the only thing that's really making sense to me, right now at least. So I'm getting something aromatic, spicy saffron, and oud combination. It's that distinctive funk that I'm getting, that I get with a lot of Bodicea fragrances, including Blue Sapphire. This doesn't smell like Blue Sapphire, but it does have like this distinctive, or the uh, saffron and oud combination, like I said. So Khaled is one that I'm gonna be wearing very soon, actually. It might even be my scent of the day today. And I will be testing this one amongst all of these might be the first one that I test because of the fact that if it's actually inspired by something that's $400, $500, it's pretty impressive. And it actually smells like it's that expensive. If you like saffron and if you like oud fragrances, you're going to love this because that's exactly what it is. It's saffron, it's oud, it's some resins, some leather and labdanum. Relatively animalic, but it does it in such an elegant way. It smells like a more expensive fragrance for sure. And for that reason, this is going to drive me to uh, review it sooner. That's why I think this is worth it. It smells like something in the same vein as something that would come out of Bodicea the Victorious. So the next one I haven't really opened up yet. It's called Tulin. So let's go ahead and crack Tulin open. Take a look at the presentation as well. I don't know. Let me unwrap. I was going to say that the white ones might be the femme versions. However, there's like Mogul that's also white. But for this one, we have top notes of ginger, pear, and rose. And the heart, we've got Ambroxan, orange flower. And in the base, amber and musk. They kept it relatively simple with the note breakdown. And the box is pretty much the same as Khalid, but the feminine version. So here we go. Same queen in armor rather than knight in armor with a heavy cap as well. This one doesn't snap on a place. Okay. This one doesn't snap on a place. The other one does. So this one does snap in a place, but very, very lightly. You got to be careful. You can't carry it on the cap and Khaled is on there a lot tighter than that. So here we go. Let's get this on a strip and see if we can pinpoint or narrow it down to what this might be inspired by or if it's an original. All right. I've smelt this before. It does not smell bad, but with the initial blast, I get the ambergris. This opened up with a pretty hefty dose of ambroxan and ginger, zingy and peppery at the same time with an undertone of rose. I haven't really gotten any of the fruits yet, but I can kind of sense a little bit of pear creeping up. This smells relatively familiar. It doesn't smell like a designer fragrance. It smells like a higher end fragrance. You do have to enjoy rose based fragrances because that's what I'm getting a lot of. It's the undertone of rose. A lot of ambergris and ambroxan is going to be a loud performing fragrance. Not sure exactly what Tolina is inspired by, but I'm going to do my best to uh, narrow it down. And when I do the full review for Khaled, hopefully I'll be able to provide you guys with a little bit more information. So the next one we're going to talk about is called Antique. Antique. Here we go. Antique also comes in this white box. And on the inside of each one of these, you're going to get the break note breakdown and brochure of all of the fragrances and the same style front door opening with this crazy heavy bottle, super high quality stuff. Notes for antique at the top, we've got cardamom, fig, coconut, milk, and black tea. In the heart, we've got iris, vetiver, jasmine, and in the base, amber, sandalwood, tonka bean, caramel, and musk. Pretty crazy cap, it's on there pretty tight with this one. Yeah, pretty unusual, very heavy stuff though. And let's see, here we go. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. Reminds me of maybe Gris Chanel. Reminds me of Gris Charnel with a T note. Yeah, this is really good. This is by far the best inspired by of Gris Charnel. And it's got a lot of the similar notes, but yeah, this literally smells like I took Gris Charnel and sprayed it. It's that good. And you can actually smell it pretty strong. You're gonna pay the price tag for this one. And it's because it's that good. It really is significantly better than a lot of the inspired buys. If you're on a budget, there's a couple of inspired buys that you can go with that are cheaper. But if you can spend a little bit more, you're going to get exactly that. Uh, well, with this one, really a lot more. This smells super high quality, man. Antique smells like Gris Charnel by BDK. Fantastic. It smells like this creamy woods, creamy lotion vibes, spices, and black tea. Very nice. And this is just a beautiful fragrance with also a jammy fig. It's pretty addicting stuff. Last one we've got is called Mugle Fort. Let's check this one out. 
All right, and okay. It opens up like so, and here we go. Oh, I don't think that was supposed to come off with it. Pretty crazy looking bottle. Bugle Ford is actually written or embossed on the sides here. And at the top, it does snap into place, a heavy cap, and it's on there pretty securely. A couple of the notes of this fragrance include the top of cardamom pimento, and then we've got a heart of cedarwood, caramel, and a base of vanilla, musk, and amber. So let's check this one out. Mm. Okay. Surprisingly feminine. I was not expecting that. I'm getting Love Don't Be Shy vibes by Killian. So this smells pretty familiar. It's got like this uh, Love Don't Be Shy vibes, Killian Love Don't Be Shy. But when I look at the notes of this, the notes resemble a lot of Minuit et Demi. Sorry if I said it wrong, but by Fragrance de Bois, that fragrance. It smells a lot like it. And so for that reason, before I get a full review, I'm gonna be buying that fragrance or a decant of it and doing a side by side. But that's what the note breakdown is suggesting to me. It's got like this creamy, sweet, very, very slightly spicy. I know that we see cardamom. I actually got pretty excited to see the cardamom, but it's barely there. It's a syrupy caramel, musk, amber, and vanillic fragrance with like backbone of maybe some dry woods. It smells relatively familiar, but the quality of this smells amazing. So it might actually be Minuit Demi just because of the note breakdown. However, to my nose, I'm getting fragrances that smell like Love Don't Be Shy. So if Love Don't Be Shy, you know, treads in that category of fragrances, then yeah, it's likely to smell like that. So stay tuned. I'm gonna be grabbing a couple of fragrances to do some side-by-sides and comparisons. But overall, the takeaway from this video is that these are actually pretty high quality stuff. The ones that I think are extremely unique is gonna be Khaled. I think this one smells fantastic. This is an amazing Gris Charnel interpret or inspired by. This one I still gotta figure out. I'm not sure exactly what that one smells like. Mugle Fort smells like this creamy, syrupy, sweet, uh, feminine fragrance. And Khanjar is a very clearly inspired by of Ganymede, which is like this mineral suede fragrance. It's relatively fresher than most suede fragrances, so you can rock that one. Not bad. I'll put the links down in the description where I picked up these fragrances, where you can do the same if anything I said interests you. Let me know down in the comments what you think about Latafa's niche Imarati. And yes, I'm going to be grabbing a bunch more as soon as they become available. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. And if you did, do me a favor, hit that like, the subscribe, and until the next video, peace.